Welcome everybody, welcome to the third day of March. Or is it? Or am I recording it right after the last one? Who knows, it's a crazy update schedule. So, um, today we're gonna be having a look at the Fade Manager. The Fade Manager is just a sweet little technique I use to transition from one thing to another with a smooth fade. So I like to use it when I change scene. Um, I like to do a fade out into a fade in instead of the new scene. Or I just like to do it before I enter a certain cinematic shot. So in the middle of your scene, you could have like an action going on. You fade out very quickly. You put the two black white screen bars and then uh, here's your cinematic shot, right? Now something cool that is in there as well is that we have a callback once the fade in or the fade out is completed. So if you're fading out to a certain scene, you can say fade out over one second. And then once you're done doing that, you have a function you can call. So that's what we're doing today. And right before we get into that, I'd like to remind everybody that your comments down below are all registered, even though the feature is not 100% yet, they're all registered and they will give you XP in the future, very short future. The feature is like 90% completed and it's recording basically everything. It's just not handing out the XP just yet. So that will be done very, very shortly. So just be aware that your comments are worth XP on the website. Quick heads up going into this. We're using a separate canvas for Fade because we're updating it in a update loop. And as you know, every draw or redraw operation you put in the canvas, redraw the whole thing, which means if we had additional UI, it would be redrawn as well. And finally, we're using canvas group instead of just image.color, which let us put more graphic if we wanted to. All right, so let's get started with the Fade Manager. Today, we have a empty scene as always, so everything is always clean. In my project, I got the Audio Manager, the character selection from the previous episode. However, I will not be using them um, until the very end where I do a test, in which case you can do it on any other scenes. So the way we're going to proceed today is by creating ourselves a new canvas, and that canvas will only contain our Fade. You can also have some little graphics on top of it. If you wanna put your logo, that's totally fine. Um, because we're gonna be using a canvas group to update the opacity. So what we'll do, right click, new canvas, and this will be my fade. Now, every time I have a new canvas, I like to set the resolution, so the reference resolution. I always do 1920 by 1080 because I like to build my game for uh, 16 per nine aspect ratio, and that also works in landscape on mobile. Now, whenever we create a UI element, any UI element, it will create a canvas um, and it will also create a event system. The event system is really important if you're doing mouse click, if you're doing a button click, if you're doing swipes uh, and that kind of stuff. In our case right now, we only have a fade in this scene. We don't have any other buttons. And when we do have other buttons, like in future scenes, I will let them create their own event system. So basically what I'm saying right here is that I don't need it in this case. I'm not interacting with the UI. And that being said, I also don't need a directional light because we're updating UI and not so much a scene itself. So having that out of the way, well, by the way, I'll leave the, uh, the main camera because I want to be able to see this. Um, having that out of the way, we're going to create ourselves a image by doing a right click UI image, and it will create it as a children of fade. Now this will be, uh, well, this will be the full screen effect basically. How do we make it full screen? Well, we go on the anchor, make sure it, say it scales with both horizontal and also vertical axis. Then we have to input zeros in all the fields. Now, some people like to do fades only using the image. So this image only. So they take the color and they just play around with the alpha value like so. However, what I'll be doing today is a little bit different. I'll go back on my fade. So I'll go back one level on my canvas itself, and I will create myself a canvas group. Now, the cool thing with a canvas group is that it controls everybody beneath it. So in this case, my canvas group is going to control the full screen. If we had logo in there, if we had button, it would also control that. Now, what exactly does it control? Well, you can decide whether or not it blocks the raycast. So if you have UI beneath that fade, can you click on it or can't you click on it? Um, interactable. So if you have anything that is interactable within that canvas, you can disable it right here. And the most important part for us today, the alpha. And that's actually it. We don't need anything else. Um, like I mentioned, since we're using canvas group, we could actually put a logo. So just to give you an example, I'll create a new image, find anything in my project right now, we could use uh, this, why not? And here we go. So I added an additional image on that. And if we go on the canvas group, it fades with it. Okay, now it's time to start coding. So let's go ahead and create a new component. 
I'll call this one Fade Manager. I'll also create myself some folders and of course drag and drop the things where they belong. Okay, now with that out of the way, let's go ahead and open the Fade Manager script and start coding. Now at the top of my script, I've pasted in a instance. It's a little bit different than what we did for the audio manager for one simple reason. Um, the audio manager, we had to create it from, well, we could have created it from anywhere really. So any scene could have called the audio manager. And then what would have happened is in the awake, that audio manager created um, its components. So the two audio source. In this case, I don't want to do it that way. The sole reason I don't want to do it that way is I'm not saying it's not possible, but I'm saying I don't want to do it that way for um, the reason it's going to be a little bit more complicated here. You're, you're free to do so. And the reason I say it's a little bit complicated is because, okay, if we are to create a fade manager, then we have to add a component type of canvas, canvas scaler, graphic raycaster, canvas group, then create two children beneath it. Um, if we're going to do the same exact thing and of course add their component as well. So I've decided that this one is not going to be dynamic. It's not going to be something I can call from anywhere, but instead I'll stick the fade manager somewhere in a preloader. By the time you're watching this, I might have um, added a second version of this on the website that does include this code. Basically, it's the same exact code as we saw in the audio manager. So instead, I would have had some sort of singleton and then in the awake, I would create all the required component for this to work. But I'm not getting ahead of myself. I might not have done that yet. Um, let's keep going. Next up, we have the field. So I have a couple of fields here. First, I have the canvas group. I have the image, which by the way, this is going to be the color. So I'm going to go ahead and add unity engine.ui so I can have access to image. And then for the start fade, this is another section that will decide whether or not um, we have a fade when we first start the scene. And when I say the scene, I'm talking about the initial scene. So the first thing that happens when you open the game and the fade manager is here. Um, so don't worry about that if you don't want to. So this one is really optional. And if you ask me personally, sometime I think this might create some spaghetti code. Instead, you might want to just call the function fade out first and then um, then just, just do it manually from uh, your script that instantiate your game or initiate your game, sorry. Okay, next up we have the private void awake. So as soon as we start a game, we set the static instance directly. Like I said, we're not using the, um, the get set like we had. Instead, we're just gonna say, okay, if it's in the scene, well, the only fade measure is this. And then in that case, that means don't put this anywhere else in any other scene. You just need to have it in one scene. Okay. And of course, keep this alive throughout the game using don't destroy on load. Now here's a bit of optional code. If you're using start with fade, I'm basically saying, okay, well at the beginning, if we are starting with fade, then um, let's go ahead and put the alpha on one. So alpha, this is the canvas group and you can just set the alpha value that's in between zero and one. So if we start with a fade, I'm going to assure myself that when I first start the game, my screen is fully opaque. Now, of course, if I'm not starting with the fade, I'll start on zero. I'll make sure my screen is completely transparent. Now there is also this piece of code, the fade in. We'll see what it does in a second. We're going to go ahead and declare it just down below here. Okay. So now our instantiation is done properly. We have our references. It's time to actually start coding the fade in and also the fade out. Um, and I went on a little bit of programmer trip. If I just paste this in, you'll see it quickly. I basically have three overload of the same function. So let me take you through what they do. First up, I'm going to open up the most uh, complicated one. Make sure I include using system for my action. What it does is it takes the color that uh, you put in parameter. It changed the color of the background. So instead of being white here, it could be a yellow, it could be a black, it could be anything you want. And then I start a coroutine routine that will take care of updating my fade um, through a certain period of time. So if I put two seconds here, it's going to take two seconds from to go from uh, in this case, it, it's a fade in. So from fully opaque to transparent. And then after that, what I plan on doing is when I'm done, I will call a callback. If I gave myself a callback, I will call it. Now going in the other overloads, I simply call the other one, but in this case, there is no callback. I just decide to send in all. And same thing over here. If um, I don't define a color, then it just used the previous color, the fade add. So very simple. If I'm calling this one, it's going to call the last one. And if I'm calling the second one, it's going to call the last one again. This is the only place where my coroutine actually starts. So whatever happens, we're always going through this very specific 
overload. Okay, so let's do it. Let's declare our I enumerator, and that's gonna be our update fade in. Just like so in this one, we'll take in our float transition time. We don't need to put the color in here because we've changed the color beforehand over there. Um, and then of course the action callback. I like to call it function in this case. Just like we've done in the audio manager, basically this is the exact same code, if you guys remember, um, somewhat, somewhat like this, right? Uh, we just increment, or in this case, we decrement the, uh, the alpha by the time. Um, and then over a certain period of time, of course, you're gonna go from fully opaque to transparent. But on top of that, there is more than this. First, once we're done with this full loop, once we waited for X amount of time, I'm going to make sure that uh, we're actually fully faded out. Sometimes, uh, you know, sometimes you might have a little bit of alpha in there still. While it's not supposed to happen, I saw it happen a couple of times, so uh, you don't wanna be playing your whole game with, say, this type of alpha value on top. It's gonna mess up your color. Um, so I'm just making sure that it's actually transparent by putting it, assigning it directly on zero over here. Now, on top of that, since we have a callback, which is, I guess, the most ex exciting thing in this case, uh, we're going to call it. So what I like to do here is I'll take that callback. If it's not null, so I'm gonna put the uh, the question mark next to it. If it's not null, let's go ahead and invoke. And this is instead of doing, say, if func is not equal to null, then func. Instead of writing this, I am simply going to put that on the one line and call the invoke. And just like this, we have these line of code for the fade in. Now let's also do the same exact thing for fade out. We're gonna go very, very quickly. So I've just pasted everything. I'm gonna make sure to change the name. So fade out, fade out, fade out, and update, fade out, of course. All the parameters, they remain the same, but we have to go inside of the function and still change who they call. So I'm calling fade out here, fade out there, and I update fade out. Um, so this seems to be correct. This seems to be correct. This also seems to be correct. What about the coroutine? So there is two little change we have to do here. Instead of saying alpha is equal to one minus T, instead alpha is going to be equal to T. And then um, once this is over, we're gonna make sure that it's fully opaque by putting the alpha on one. And of course, we leave the call back in there. And that's it, that's our script. We've made it in one go. Amazing, now it's time to actually test it out. So back in the engine, I have the fade object over here. I'll make sure to assign my fade group, which is my canvas group. It's right here, it's right on top on the same object. So I'm going to drag and drop this right in here. And then finally, my fade image, which is uh, my full screen in this case. This is what I'm changing. So when I'm changing the color, I'm changing this. Let's go ahead and drag and drop it here. And now I also have start with fade enabled. So if I press and play, technically I should be able to see um, a fade in over 1.5 seconds. So here it was. Let's do 10 seconds so you can see it properly. And yep, we start with the black color and over 10 seconds, it disappear. Now it's time for us to test it out in a more dynamic manner. What we could do is we could create a test object just like we've done with the audio manager. That's exactly what I'll be doing and I'll just copy it fairly quickly. Okay, so here it is. I'll take you through it. You don't have to copy it, of course. Uh, if you want to test it out, you're free to do so or you can also download the files if you want to see it. Um, but here it is. If I press on keyboard alpha one, I test fade out, then I test fade in. I test fade out again, this time with a color. I test fade out with a different amount of time. And here I test fade out but with a callback, that's the most important thing. So um, uh, what was going to happen is basically, I will wait one second with a yellow screen. So I'll be in the game, I'll see everything. And then when I press on this button, alpha five, there's gonna be a fade out happening. So I'll see my screen getting yellow. After one second, I won't see anything but yellow and also my graphic in this case. And then it will call my pretty little function. Uh, it could be anything else. You, as you can see here, it's defined just below. And it's gonna say, we're completely faded. In this case, maybe you wanna be able to change the scene or something like that. And finally, when I press six, the same exact thing will happen, but instead of doing a uh, fade out, it's going to be fading. So, let's go ahead. I'm going to drop this script really anywhere. Let's say on the camera, 
press play and let's have a look at this. So that was my start fade. Now I'm going to press one. It fades to black. I'm going to press two. Fades in. Three. Fades out with the white color in this case. Um, four. It's a long fade in. Five. There's going to be a callback. So we're completely faded. Just appeared in my console. And finally, six. Once it's done, the screen is clear. Let's do it with it. Amazing. So we're done with the implementation. However, I'd like to take this over to the previous project we had, so the previous um, character selection project. And I'll just implement it there so you guys have a look on, on how it feels like. So when I was confirming my selection, when I was choosing my character yesterday, here, I could have done something like so. So fade measure, instance, and then do a fade out in this case. And then with my fade out, I would do something like, hey, let's wait two seconds on a black background and I'd like to call to game. So I would be sending my player over to the other scene. So I just do something like so in, in my to game, I would call unity engine um, load scene and I'll be calling something like game. Now it's going to crash in my case because I don't have any scene called game, but at least we'll see the graphic and we'll see what happens. Okay. So actually we won't see the graphics. We're only gonna see the color in this version. I don't have the graphics. I just simply have the screen. Oh, and I just realized that I do not have a prefab for this one. So let's go ahead and create that in our folder. This will be, um, this will be updated as well on your end if you don't want to get from the website. Prefab, and I'll just drag and drop this in here so I don't have to recreate it all the time. So back in my scene, I'll drop my prefab in here. All my reference are already set. I'll press on play. So let's have a look at what it gives us right inside of the game. I've muted my sound. Let's go ahead and click on something. I actually didn't mute my sound. Okay, there it is. Um, so you don't see any screen popping up. However, you do see that the callback was being called simply because, well, we got the error that um, we thought we were gonna be having simply because we don't have the game scene. So what's going on here? Well, we're basically in the wrong order. <laughs> In the sort order, we should be something really, really above everything. So in this case, let's do sort order 10. Now, if working in this scene bothers you, <laughs> because you know you don't get to play with the other things we had before, so you don't you don't get to actually see what was going on beforehand. Um, what I suggest you do is you just put the alpha on zero here, and remember, where's my canvas? Here it is. Put the alpha on zero, and remember that when we start the game in the awake, we do put it on one. So we'll be fine here. So just put the sort order on something very, very high, maybe 15. I don't know how many canvas you're going to have in your game, but it has to be on top, of course. I'm also going to make sure I override my other prefab. Now we're going to press play. Let's see, we had our nice fade at the beginning. We choose Charky Boy, and then we head into the other scene. And at that point, we load the new scene. And from that scene, we could say, okay, do a fade in. All right, so that was a big one and we are done. So thank you so much for watching. Once again, please have a look at the Patreon page if you'd like to support us. That's the best way to support us right now financially. Else, you can always uh, subscribe. That's very important. You gotta subscribe on the YouTube channel. You gotta like some of the videos if you like them and if you can share them, that's amazing. Basically, I'm just begging for YouTube stats right now. <laughs> Trying to get back to where we were. Uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you tomorrow. Cheers.